Hello friends, I am again here with a new session and today we will discuss a very important topic which is used in pavement design, vehicle damage factor. And I will tell you how this concept evolved and how to determine vehicle damage factor from Excel Road Survey data. There are many instances in India and even in other countries also when a pavement has failed prematurely in spite of good design and strict quality control. And investigations of such failure have at times concluded that overloading of commercial vehicles is excessive and that was not considered properly while calculating the design traffic. When a commercial vehicle carries axle load more than a standard axle load, it is said to be overloaded. So basic question is, why do we need this vehicle damage factor? Now vehicle damage factor is required because pavements carry different types of vehicles and vehicles carry different magnitude of loads. Pavement cannot be designed for each load and therefore this variation into axle load is considered in the form of vehicle damage factor. So, the question is, what should be the design load and how other loads will create damaging effect on the pavement and how to convert all vehicle loads observed on a highway or expected on a highway in case of a new road into equivalent number of standard loads. So what is vehicle damage factor? By definition, it is a factor representing the loads carried by the commercial vehicles flying on the road converted to a standard axle load. It is relative structural damage caused by, to the pavement by different types of axles carrying different axle loads. And this is used for converting a given traffic volume into equivalent number of standard axles. And as I told you, it is a very important parameter in design of flexible as well as rigid pavement to take care of overloading of commercial vehicles. So, Standard axle load as defined in India are of four types A1, A2, A3, and A4. A1 type of axle is when you have a single axle with single wheel on either side, like this, and standard load for this configuration is 65 kN. A2 is when you have single axle with dual wheel assembly on either side and standard axle load for this assembly is 80 kN. Tandem axle with dual wheel on either side, that is the configuration, and standard axle load for this is 148 kN, and tridem axle with dual wheel on either side, that is number of axles are three here, and the standard axle load is 224 kN. Now, before I go further, let me explain to you what is the concept behind development of vehicle damage factor. The ASO, ASO here stands for American Association for State Highway Officials, carried out a series of controlled experiments during late 1950s to know how traffic contributes to the deterioration of highway payments. And result of this study were used to develop the pavement design guide in 1961. These tests were for a pavement of non-composition and this was subjected to repeated load applications of trucks of different axle load and the number of passes required to fail the pavement were noted. This test introduced several new concepts and one such concept was of load equivalency factor which we commonly uh, call vehicle damage factor and they found that heavier vehicles reduce the serviceability of a pavement in a much shorter period than light vehicles and that is where this concept of equivalent axle load started. They developed family of curves relating axle load, pavement thickness index and number of repetitions required to fail the pavement and one such family of curve is shown here. Now you can see here the thickness index is calculated based on D1, D2, D3 and these are thickness of different layers 
on y axis is thickness index and on x axis weighted axle load applications in 1000 that are required to make or to initiate failure in the pavement now here if you consider a let us say thickness index of 3 and the axle load a single axle load of 18 kilo pound then you will find that the number of repetitions required to fail the payment is 185,000 applications. But when you change this load to 30 kilo pound, the uppermost line, 30 kilo pound for the same thickness index, this payment will fail in 25,000 node applications. Now that is the basis of vehicle damage factor that a 18 kilo pound weight will fail the payment in 185,000 applications while 30 kilo pound axle load can fail the payment in just 25,000 load applications. Now this is one just this is just one example. There were several such family of curves which were developed for different thickness index, different axle loads, axle load configuration and the basic equation which we derived is this one that the Wx upon W8 is given by this equation. Now here W18 number of 18,000 pounds that is 80 kN single axle load and Wx here is number of x pound single axle load which will cause the same type of failure in the payment. And these are remaining parameters like standard axle load in kilo pound, L18, LX is the axle load being evaluated, L2 is the code for axle configuration, 1 for single axle, 2 for tandem axle, 3 for tridem, and S for standard. And this G here, G here is given by this equation, where PT is given by this equation. PT is divisibility index and SN is structural number. Now you can realize here that this equation is quite complicated and difficult to remember. But if you consider the same figure which I demonstrated here that 18 kilo pound axle load will cause failure of payment in 185,000 load applications and 30 kilo pound will create failure in 25,000 load applications then you can find out what is the equivalency factor. Now equivalency factor is 185,000 divided by 25,000 and that is 7.4. Now this 7.4 when you take in this that what is the exponent here n when w1 upon ws is 7.4. w1 is 30 kilo pound and ws is standard load that is 18 kilo pound then n is 3.94 and if you do it for all range of load applications and all range of thickness index what they found that the average value of n is close to 4.0 and that is how this fourth power law is used to calculate vehicle damage factor for each load so single axle with single wheel on either side, VDF will be axle load in kilo Newton divided by 65, which is a standard axle load for this configuration to power four. And similarly for single axle with dual wheel on either side, this will be the equation. And for tandem axle with dual wheel on either side, axle load in kilo Newton divided by 148 to power four. And this is called fourth power law. It is extensively used in Indian conditions also and in many other countries. Now, Excel load survey should be conducted in field for 24 hours in each direction and minimum sample size, it depends upon the traffic volume. Now, as per IRC 37 2018, if number of commercial vehicles per day is less than 3000, then we should take at least 20% sample size. If it is more than 6,000, we should take at least 10% with a minimum 
target of 900 vehicles. PDF should be evaluated separately for two directions if there is a significant difference between the axle loads of commercial vehicles flying in two directions of traffic. And this can be done through axle load survey at site and you can use the way in motion system like this or axle load pad like this. Axle load can also be of different type. You can read the wheel load directly on the, the display here or this display can be placed remotely so that it becomes safer. If the, it is not possible to carry out Excel load survey and particularly for small projects, then IRC 37 suggests the tentative VDF values for different traffic conditions and different terrain conditions. If initial two-way traffic commercial vehicles per day is less than 150, then for rolling and plain terrain, this can be taken as 1.7 and for hilly terrain, 0.6. Similarly, for other traffic conditions and for other terrain conditions, you can choose VDF value from this table. But these values should be taken only for small projects and not for bigger projects. In case of bigger projects, Excel load survey should invariably conducted in field and VDF should be evaluated. In Excel load survey, we take weight of each vehicle, each wheel of the vehicle and I will explain one example how to calculate vehicle damage factor from field data. Let us say the type of vehicle surveyed is bus and these are the axle load data which are collected in field and for a bus the front axle is single wheel on both sides and rear axle is dual wheel on both sides and therefore the standard weight the standard load for front axle is 65 kN and for rear axle it will be 80 kN. So these values are obtained in field from axle load survey. The load of front axle and load of rear axle. Now this is to be converted into damaging fact. Now 22.06 divided by 65 to the power 4 that is 0 0.013 and similarly 44.13 divided by 80 kN to the power 4 is 0 0.093. So as long as this load of rear axle is less than 80 kN, damage effect will be less than 1. If it is more than 80, then damage effect will be more than 1. So for a load of 88.25, this will be 1.481. And this 1.481 is 88.25 divided by 80 to the power 4 and similarly for this 44.13 divided by 65 to the power 4 that is 0 0.212. So similarly we calculate damage in fact for each axle and let us say the total number of buses surveyed is 109 so you get values of damage in fact for 109 buses. This is the total. Sum of these two columns is the total damaging fact. And this is the grand total. 103 for all these values in this column is 103. So total damaging fact for buses in one direction is 103.2. And total number of buses which were surveyed is 109. And therefore, vehicle damage factor for bus in this direction will be 103.2 divided by 109 that is 0 0.947. Similarly, you do this Excel survey in down direction also, the same procedure. You take the sample in the up direction and down direction both. And let us say here in this direction you surveyed 102 buses and total damage effect here 58.84. So the vehicle damage factor for bus in down direction will be 0 0.576. Similarly, we do for two axle trucks. For two axle truck, the front axle is having a standard load of 65 kN and rear axle is 80 kN. This is similar to bus. And these calculations are also similar in nature as we have done for bus. 
The total damaging factor of 2x ultra, summation of these values will be 218.9. And if you have surveyed, let us say, 70 trucks, then the average value is 3.127. In the next direction, that is in the down direction, we have surveyed 74 trucks and the total damage effect here is 1108.8 and total vehicle damage factor will be 14.984. Similarly, for 3 axle truck, standard load for front axle here will be 65 kN and for rear axle it will be 148 kN. So, this is the front axle load in up direction and these are the front axle load in down direction. So, this will be calculated as we have done earlier and this will be calculated 162 divided by 148 to the power 4 that gives you 1.435 and this is the total damaging fact, summation of these two values and this is the total for 112 trucks. So, average vehicle damage factor for 3XL truck will be 7.121 and similarly for the down direction it will be 65.163. You can see the difference here because at this side these are actual data on a highway. In one side the heavy trucks were moving and on the other side only empty trucks were moving. This was the location near mine area and therefore all trucks going from the mines they were loaded and all trucks coming to the mine area were empty trucks. So that makes difference in vehicle damage factor in two directions. So summary of axle load survey is that for bus we have VDF and we have the count in up direction, in down direction. You can say left hand side or right hand side. Similarly for light commercial vehicles, for two axle trucks, for three axle trucks, for multi axle vehicles, you have all this data. We have calculated vehicle damage factor as well as corresponding count of the vehicles. So total count in up direction is 1084 and in down direction 1140 and combined VDF here will be 3.246 and 20.55. See how it is done, how it is arrived at the VDF will be volume of vehicles of a particular category and its equivalent axle load factor. So 109 into 0 0.947 plus 123 into 0.181 plus 70 into this plus 112 into this plus 670 into 3.548 divided by total sum 1084. That is 3.246. Similarly, for this direction you can calculate it will be 21.555. Now if it is a two lane road then we calculate overall vehicle damage factor by this equation that is weighted average 3.246 multiplied by 1084 plus 21.555 multiplied by 1140 divided by total average daily traffic. That is sample size and this will be 12.6. This is a VDF for a two-lane road. If it is a multi-lane highway, then we should design the payment in two directions with actual VDF values. So friends, in this session we have understood the concept of vehicle damage factor, how it was evolved, historical background of this and how it is important in the design of payments and the procedure of calculating vehicle damage factor from Excel load survey. Please write your comments and questions in the comment box and you can suggest any topic which you would like to be covered in these sessions. Thanks for watching.